Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. We're here again for another IPA Junior Bushcraft Survival course. Uh, we're here in the woods. It's a beautiful day today for a change, not raining, which used to be one of our trademarks on previous sessions. And uh, the canopy of the trees is giving us a good shading, so uh, which is good. Today we're going to be doing some wood whittling and probably end up doing some cooking, making some cheeseburgers. We'll see how that goes in a minute. The uh, My assistants are setting up at the moment, setting camp up. Using the uh, woodland shelter we built quite a few sessions ago and it's still up. So it's actually beautiful, this woodland is now. It's all in, all in leaf. New leaves coming out. I've got bluebells as well. We'll take some pictures of those later. So um, let's see how the others are getting on. Let's make a start. Right. So how are we going then? Okay. I would have thought you'd be using the actual shelter itself. What, in it? Yeah. A bit more shade. Do you want it? A bit too hot in there. Well, out here is... Out here is just about as good, I think. Then. Right, while you are finished doing that, I want to do start off with a knife talk. Okay. So... Don Don's going to have to take over. Okay. The United Kingdom has a knife law of carrying them and using them, which is usually about three inch knife. Standard Markley knife. Okay. This is a knife, fixed blade knife. This is the cover. I take the cover like that. Blatant. I take the cover off like that. This is the handle. This is the blade. This is edge. I only use a knife for whittling, cutting food and short small little things like that or for chop or for cutting wood by putting it on the wood, wood bits like that and using a mallet to split splitting wood. When I finish with the knife I put the cover back on like that right when I when I walk the knife I walk with a knife like this okay it's all the safety aspects of using a knife so nobody gets hurt and injured in the process. All right? When I'm using the knife, I use it an arm's length, okay? Including my partner, if my partner's helping me. All right? So with the knife on the arm's length like that. Okay? When I finish the knife, I take the knife down like that when I am using it, I'm not using it. So the cover is facing that way and the handle is facing that way. So if you fall over, you're not going to get injured or hurt. Okay. Also, there are a few more as well. So when I'm passing, when I finish with the knife, and I'm passing it to my, the next person. I will pass the knife like that. You don't have to get on your knees. Just, just polish it. Okay. Yeah. That way you've got the knife, and you know if you pass it that way, right, and you take the knife like that, and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Accidents right, happen. Okay. When I finish with the knife totally, I will place it in a designated area, like a toolbox or my bag. In this case, it would be in the bag. Okay? I think I've got it all in the same order, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that is your policy for using a knife correctly. Okay? When you're cutting with a knife, you cut away from your body, okay? With a glove hand. You should be using a glove hand if you're holding wood. I hope you've got gloves. You should have them from previous weeks okay so you never ever cut near your leg because here you've got the juggler vein that goes all the way up here if you cut that you'll bleed out now I won't be able to get into hospital or walking in time okay so you cut away from your body all right use something to position the wood on and cut away like that or you can use like this but make sure you're holding the wood with a glove hand. I don't need a glove on this hand because I've got a handle. Okay? So that's tool talk. Initially you've got the you've got the knife. Uh, we've talked about using the knife um, safely. Cut always cut away from you. Okay, so find yourself a nice little bit of a stick and we'll carve sort of a, a like a a paracord peg. So, so what we're looking for is a pointed 
end and the hook at the top end. Okay. Thing. So you'll need to strip the wood first and then use the carving tool. You can you can actually carve spoons and all sorts of things out of wood. If the wood's big enough. Time consuming, it'll probably take you about several hours or a couple of hours at most to do that. Um, if you can't cut those big noggins out, find something that's a bit straighter. You can you can you can use live wood, but well, live wood's used for if you want to make um, um, a post to hold up power, you know, power cord of the shelter because it's, uh, you know, but. Dead wood can be quite easier to carve. Let's see what see what we can find out down here and that. There's a nice little piece. There's a nice little piece. Look. There you go. Nice little piece. When you left your knife when you're not using it, not in the holster. Always make sure you holster the knife when you finish. Like I says, anyone can pick up a knife up and start cutting. about focusing about an arm's length and tall width tall length yeah it's perfect yeah and it's nice to actually reuse the shelter that we used and created on previous sessions as well yeah, it's about four weeks since we last come here and uh, the leaves and the plants are coming right out Beautiful bluebells. Absolutely beautiful. That's where we were positioned before, down there. Did the tarp shelter. Once you've done one, you can then do whatever. I don't know how to do the hoop thing. The hoop thing. Strip it, strip it completely. Ooh, yeah, and then I'm going to cut it in half. And then you can cut a point on it, can't you? I think so. Like sharpen the point on it. What, like a stake? Yeah. yeah, sharpen the point on it and then I'll show you how to carve out the, the hook. Quite a simple process. Yeah. yeah, Lane's got the gist of it, you know. He's quite good at it. I've done a spoon before. Mm. Yeah, just strip it down to about halfway and then I'll prepare the rest of it, make it easier. That's the sort of thickness of the wood that you've got there. Yeah. That's what you really need. But for, any, for a demonstration, Lane's pretty it's pretty good. Yeah. I wouldn't use it on top power cord though. A bit brickle. Could be stronger than it looks though, to be fair. Well it is. Uh, so just keep that's it. The knife taught that I did at the beginning is usually used at forest schools when you've got a lot of young kids yeah. in a circle so you can demonstrate and you've got all the entire attention of the whole group. Right? This is why at the beginning of a fire school session, what normally happens is you get them all sitting in a circle around the fire circle. Yeah. Okay. And then you get, you've got their attention and that's when you do the tool talk. It's like when you use an ax, there's a tool talk with that. With a saw, there's a tool talk with that. There's one with a lot of them. There's one even called a bill hook as well. A bill hook is used as like splitting wood, um, chopping branches off the trees like if you've got that long length there and you've got branches on you use it for like that lopping the, yeah, the branches off the edge now we'll saw that 
so that's that's you know that's the bill hook there is another wood splitting one as well. i can't remember what it's called it's got like a lot it looks like a scythe it is it's just a short it's got a short handle and a long curved blade like a like like death scythe is that enough yeah right Leighton. what have you done yours Oh, okay, you're using the uh, the cutters, cutters now. What you're carving? All I've been doing is the same bit. So you get the gist of that, then, don't you? Huh? Is that it? Uh, not yet. Right. Do you want to make a cup of hot chocolate now? Yep. Is that okay? Yep. Is that it? Will it go in the ground? Right. Oh hot chocolate time. Leighton's Le Le going to be making some hot chocolate now. Uh, I spilt it on there. Canopy is very much developed now. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Got sun shining, peeking through. Look. Now we've got all these young branches growing out of out of this tree here. That bit. All the bluebells. And if you look closer, we've got ferns growing as well. Look. Got ferns and bracken. It's lovely, isn't it? All the blue bells. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we're on a sort of a, a rise in area here because it goes down, down sort of an inclined sort of thing. You must have felt it when you was walking up, up that slope there. Huh? <laughs> no, I, I was getting you through the gaps in the glass. Oh, right. Different shot. <laughs> no, I can't. You can't focus on you when they've got the grass as well because the grass is in the foreground and you're in the background. Yeah. So yeah, it's all basically, it's all about um, using a knife safely uh, in, the, in this environment. Um, you can cook yourself anywhere, um, anytime, any place. So if you use it correctly, you achieve the goals that you set out to do. Um, tool talks are mainly used um, at Forest School, but I'm using them here because we've got a junior present and uh, it it will do him good to to learn that way and have the respect for the tools that he's using. We're going to do a bit of knife sharpening as well. Um, it's all very well um, using a knife to um, to do the job, but it's looking after your tools after as well. So we're going to do a bit of um, knife care as well, um, and then we'll get on to uh, see how this hot chocolate's going. Zoom, zoom there it's doing pretty well and also we're going to try and do um, a bit of uh, woodland cooking so that'll be in the next uh, the next activity so make sure you tune into that I'm not going to conclude it with this one this is just about wood whipping so if you want uh, if you want to see that one um, tune into the next one uh, next week as well we'll be probably be doing some fire lighting and open fire cooking so that'll be interesting so let's go and see how the others are going and getting on got some lovely silver birch here um 
Yeah, brilliant. I think we're going to be using this for fire lighting. Yeah, we'll be able to use that. There's a lot of kindling around here we can use first stage and second stage. I like to collect. That's my one. Oh. Yeah. Can you all use the set pan for me? Oh, me. Yeah. Just draw it on its side a little bit. Just turn it on its side just a little bit. That's it. The other way. The other way. The other way. Towards you. That's it. Brilliant. I Why do you need a sock? Why do you need this? Oh, what? Yeah, In the camping area. I bought it so David could read it. Well, that. You can take that. That's for you. What? What's that? That, that letter on the council. Is that all right? Not a one, but... no, it's fine. It doesn't have to. It's not. It's not a comparison test. Yeah. It's just achieving what you set out to achieve. You achieved to do that. You did it, and it, as long as it works, does the function work? Will it work? It goes in. Look, and it works. Yeah. Well done. Got a piece of string there. That's it. That's it then. Brilliant. <laughs> Okay, then that brings us to the end of Wood Whitlin. Hope you enjoyed that as these enjoyed it. So just a basic one, power cord pegs. Hopefully they'll do the job, they should do. Although we're not gonna use them today. Hot chocolate, good, good call that was, hope that's nice. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe and check out our next video, Woodland Cooking in Burgers. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It's totally free. Anything from our, any last closing words? No, just yeah. have a good one. Any comments on that activity? Yeah. Excellent. Until, yeah, until next time, take care now.